Okay. What a joy to be here. Amen. I don't know of a place. I don't know of no place on planet Earth. I don't know of one place on planet Earth, this whole planet Earth, that I'd rather be than right here tonight. Amen. I appreciate Brother Hawkins, Mrs. Hawkins, and these folk driving down from Kingsport. And you pray for Sister Hawkins. Pray for her. She's got that lupus. And I want you to pray for her that God would touch her. We know he's able. We know he's able. And she didn't care for me saying that. Let's really pray. They ain't, a, they ain't a finer lady in the state of Tennessee in her. Wonderful Christian. Wonderful Christian. But I want to say this, listen real close. Romans 8, 18. It'll all be over one of these days. And we'll be able to say, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not even worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now, I don't think this couple here and this couple here, and Freddie here, and I want y'all, you two to come over here on this side, and I want all the young people, now we need to check the bathroom back there if them boys had not come out yet, they need to be already out here, and I want all the boys and girls from 10, from 10 years old to about, let's say, 21 years old, I want you to come sit here on the front. All of the boys and girls, from 10 years old up, from 10 years, y'all come on down here boys, get up down here on the front. You know that message that God blessed Dr. J. Harold Smith with, God's Three Deadlines? He'd preach that, he would preach that in about every service. I mean, every, every week, once a week, he'd preach that. And Brother Hawkins, cassette tape, video, from that one message, they say there'd been a million souls saved. A million. A million souls saved from that one message, God's three deadlines. God's three deadlines. Sent unto death, you know who can sin unto death? Nobody but saved folk. Right. You can sin unto death. Are you listening? If any, if any man sees his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask. And he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. But I say unto you, there is a sin unto death. Yes. I do not Amen. say that he should pray for it. Amen. All unrighteousness is sin, and there's a sin not in death. Yep. Now the Bible said, and the church, you know the church got a lot of power. Local church, church that's been born, got a lot of power. If you'll read, is it 1 Corinthians 5, 5? Check it and see. Deliver such one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, yep. that the spirit might be saved in the day uh -huh. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you'll read them four verses above there, the local church has got that power. I better read that because somebody's looking at me a little strange. I better read that again. Is that 1 Corinthians 5, 5? I thought it was. You got your Bible there open to it. Let's see what it says. Are you in, you in chapter 5? It is reported commonly that there is a fornication among you and such fornication is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And you're puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For verily I, for notice now, for verily as absent in body but present in spirit have judged already as though I were present concerning him that have done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you're gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, what's the next verse say? To deliver such one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit might be saved in the day of what? Of our Lord? Is that what it said? Church got a lot of power, brother. 
You better believe it. Let me see for sure what that said in verse 5. To deliver such one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So I had it right then. What do you think about that, young man? The power of a local church. Now, if you'll read, if you'll read the last few verses in Acts chapter 4, don't forget about the chapter. When you come to chapter 5, just continue right on and Ananias and Sapphire were saved. They were saved. And you know what they've done? Sinned unto death. They were saved and they sinned unto death. And if our churches today was as clean as them early churches, for about six months, we'd be busy morning, afternoon, evening, having funerals. But after about six or eight months, God's people gets more fear of God in them. That's it. Oh yes. We don't fear God like our forefathers feared God. That's it. Now that shouldn't make you nervous. It's just right. And right will always be right. Right will never be wrong. Is everybody listening? I'm going to put them tracks right there because I don't want to get them tracks wet. Lord's will may pass them out tonight. Amen. Let's pray hard for all of our servicemen yes, amen. that's over there in that war. Yeah, yeah. Let's really pray. Seems like Brother Hawkins, most of the night last night, I was awake, waking up, amen. praying. Yes, waking up, praying. Mm. Waking up, praying. For our leaders and for our soldiers, yeah. we'd better pray. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm telling you, we better pray. Yes. You just think that's one of your sons or one of your grandsons. That's why you got to look at this thing. Is everybody listening? We need to really pray. And is there not a cause? I believe there's a cause. You may not believe there's a cause, but is there not a cause? There is a cause. There is a cause. I don't have a doubt about that. There is a cause. So I want, to preach, I want to preach a message tonight. And Brother Franklin, I probably preached it here before. But I'd say, Brother Mike, some of them songs that y'all sung tonight, have y'all sung them here before? Y'all have? Y'all have. Some of the songs that we sung tonight, you mean you, you sung them here before. Is, is everybody listening? And I'll just, I'm just going to preach what's on my heart. That's what I'm going to do. That's what you better preach. And I've been in meetings, I've been in meetings, Brother Hawkins, where the moderator of the Jubilee, and you have two of the camp, they, they got maybe three preachers to come up there and preach 20 minutes. Or maybe they got four preachers to come up there and preach 15 minutes. And you've heard men of God say, well, I had a message on my heart, but there's no way I can preach it in 20 minutes. But I've got one. I've got one, and that'll be a sermon. It won't be no message. You preach 20 minutes of what's on your heart. If they give you 15 minutes, preach 15 minutes of what's on your heart, or you'll miss it. That's it. So I'm preaching tonight, and I'm going to get two reasons, and I'm going to run through these reasons fast. I'm preaching a message that God bless me with uh, just a little bit from Perry, Florida. Is everybody listening? Perry, Florida. You know right word to say. That's where God blessed me. Give me this message. Perry, Florida. And we stayed over and I said I'll never do this. I was booked outside of Perry there and the next week, but 50 miles from Perry is Tallahassee. I was to be in Tallahassee the next week and I preached this message. I got this message while I was in Perry, and I preached it the first time, mm, Gale Avenue Baptist Church, Brother Clyde Owen, Tallahassee, Florida. That's what I'm preaching tonight. And it'll be just as fresh as the first time I ever preached it. That's what I like about it. It'll be just as fresh. I, you, you know, y'all don't do it here, but some places they do. When you sing Amazing Grace, when you get to the last verse, they change that when we've been there 10,000 years. 
And they don't realize the reason why they change it. They don't realize that 10 in the Bible is totality. Jude verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these sayings, Behold, the Lord cometh. Mm. Well, how many? Ten thousands of these saints. That's all of them. That's what the word ten means. Totality. <laughs> so don't change it forevermore because it's not going to be no evermore. That's it. How wonderful. How marvelous. How glorious. Mm. Amen. Let's everybody stay. Preaching this evening from Luke 16 verse 19 and sir, you don't have to stand. You just keep your seat right there. I'm preaching on 10 reasons why I don't want to see nobody. I don't want to see nobody. I mean nobody die and go to hell. Nobody. And if you've got your Bible, Luke 16, I'm going to start reading verse 19. That was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and he fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Lazarus died. And what happened? He was carried by the angels unto Abraham's bosom. But now, most all of you folk, now you babes in Christ don't know this. But if you're saved, and if you have a wreck on your way home tonight, and you're killed instantly, you're not going to Abraham's bosom. Oh no. You say, where are you going? Third heaven. <laughs> Matthew 27, 50. Jesus, 51. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. Or he gave up the ghost. And behold, what happened? The veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. The earth did quake. The rocks rent, the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of their graves when? After his resurrection. And, and went into the holy city and appeared unto me. And now when a saint of God dies, where do they go? 2 Corinthians 5 8. We are confident. I say then. And notice now, we're confident, I say then and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. Listen to this, Philippians 1, 23. Paul said, I'm in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Oh, yeah. So now, where is he at? Colossians 3, 1. If you then be in risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ setteth at the right hand of God. And when a saint of God, when a Christian dies now, it's not Abraham's bosom. Oh no, it's third heaven. There wasn't but one thing that separated the rich man and Lazarus. That was a great gulf, but there's a lot more separates them tonight. When a saint of God dies now, it's third heaven. How wonderful. The rich man also died, and you better look at me, and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes. Being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me. Send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for said I'm tormented in this flame. But he said, son, remember. Now what them devils, I'll tell you young people, that you're young, that you've got plenty of time. But if there's a large cemetery here closed, or if there's a large 
Memorial Gardens, if we could get permission and get some lights, I'd go over there tonight and look at them markers and I'll find more than one. Your age and 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 your age. Don't listen to the devil and his devils. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me. It's too late. Hebrews 9 27, too late. And I said, point on the man wants to die, but after this, the judgment. Too late, friend. Too late. Too late. Yes. Second Corinthians 6 2, for he saith, I've heard thee in a time accepted. In a day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. No promise of the mark. Said they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. But answered, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, said they will repent. In verse 26, and beside all of this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father that thou would ascend him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify to them. And I wish we was his concern about lost folk is that rich man was in hell. I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would ascend him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify to them lest they also come unto this place of torment. Abraham answered, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. But he answered, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, said they will repent. And he answered and said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So you boys and girls, everybody be seated. Just keep your eyes right on me as I bring God's message. Everybody listen now. Matthew chapter 5 verse 29 and 30. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it's profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not the whole body should be cast into hell. Verse 30. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, cast it from you. For said it's profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Now you know what Jesus is teaching us here? You know what the Lord's teaching us? Don't you let nothing. Don't you let church members. Church members. You know what the devils will do? They'll get you looking at church members that's not living right. And they'll say, you as good as they are, you might be better. Hey, but that's not going to justify you. Oh no, no. Don't listen to them devils. They try to get you. You're going to have to give an account of your own self. So get your eyes off of them. I mean, get your eyes off of them. God help us. Matthew 7, 13, 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate. And though it's straight, and though it's narrow, and though it was shut up with sin, fenced in with the law. Thank God. Second Corinthians 5, 21. For he made him to be sin for us who you know sin that we might be made the righteousness of God through him. First Peter 2, 24. Who his own self by our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you're healed. Hebrews 2 9, y'all shout right here. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels. For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for mm, every man. Amen. Ain't that wonderful? Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. I was preaching on the radio and preaching on hell over 40 years ago. 
And the ones that was in there at the station with me, they got to rejoicing, praising the Lord. I wonder, I wondered, why in the world are they rejoicing? Me preaching on hell. Wonder why they're rejoicing. You know what they told me? Said we was rejoicing, wasn't going there. Amen. 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 Oh yes. Brought it, listen, straight as the gate now. And there's the way that leadeth from the life and few there be that shall find it. Is everybody listening? Matthew 7, 21, 22, 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess in them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And you know what I believe about that? I believe that's the saddest words that will ever fall on natural minded ears. I never knew you. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Lord, didn't I preach? And didn't I even have people to come forward when I gave the invitation and made a profession of faith? And Lord, didn't I do this? And Lord, didn't I do this? But the saddest words you'll ever hear, I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Hebrews 12, 29. For our God is a... Consuming fire. Is it Psalm 711? God judgeth the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. Psalm 5022. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. See, all you hear about God is God is love and God is love, but that's not the essence of God. Oh, no. The essence of God is holiness. Yeah, amen. Is everybody listening? Holiness. That's it. And God is love. But the essence of God is not love. It's holiness. Holiness. Amen. And if we have a few more to get outside, I'll go out there and preach a while. And you better believe I will too. I'll get out there and preach. God help us. Matthew 10, 28, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Yep. Proverbs 27, 20, hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of men are never satisfied. Proverbs 15, 24, the way of life is above to the wise that he may depart from hell beneath. Proverbs 9, 17, 18. Everybody look at me. He's got some of the best artists in the world, the devil and his devils. They draw these pictures yeah. of beautiful women with not enough clothes on to clean out a 10 gauge shotgun. Uh, That's right. They got some of the best artists in the world. And they show you all these things. <laughs> They show you the vodka and they show you the different kind of alcoholic beverages and they look real good, but they don't show you the back side of the picture. Like, like, when, like when we was down there in Dothan, Alabama in, in a meeting in Dothan and on that circle out there covering them young people up with the coats and things, they don't show you the back side. Oh no! Hey, they don't show you that side. That hurt his business too bad. Yeah. They don't show you that side. Stolen waters are sweet. You think I'd be ignorant enough to, you don't think I would be ignorant enough, ignorant enough to stand up here this evening and tell you that there's no pleasure in sin, do you? Oh, no. Yes, there's pleasure. Right. Oh, yeah. But I want to say along with the meekest man, I believe the meekest, I believe the meek, meekest man, now, I believe the greatest type of Jesus in the Old Testament probably was Joseph and Daniel. You can't find nothing wrong with either one of them. Is everybody listening? But Moses was the meekest man in all the Old Testament, the meekest man. 
Well, you know he had to be the meekest. Put up with them children of Israel and all that grumbling and complaining for 40 years. You know he had to be. But you know what? You remember what Moses said? He said, brother, suffer afflictions with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Stolen waters are sweet, bread eating, and secrets pleasant, but he knoweth not that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Proverbs 7, 27, her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death. Is everybody listening? Now, I want to pick back up in Luke chapter 16 and I want to get two reasons right quick in Luke chapter 16 why I don't want to see nobody I don't want to see nobody, nobody die and go to hell. Nobody. Amen. Notice now. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lived up his eyes. Now the first reason why I don't want to see nobody die and go to hell. I want you to listen real close now. Look at me, boys and girls. Keep your eyes right on me. The first reason why? The same senses that you have here this evening, hey, you'll have them same senses in hell. Same senses. Okay, follow me now. Number one, he could see. Look at it. He could see Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for said I'm tormented in this flight. Number one, he could see. Number two, he was thirsty. Number three, he could feel. Number four, he could talk. Number five, he could hear. Number six, he could remember. And number seven, he reasoned, but it was too late. Favorite Father Abraham, have mercy upon me, send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger. Now, finger's name. Tip of his finger. And water. Second reason why, and I'm going to run through these things as fast as I can, Brother Hawkins. The second reason why I don't want to see nobody die and go to hell. Think about going to a place and there's no kind of juice, there's no kind of soft drinks, there's no kind of liquids when you're real thirsty, I mean, when you've been out working, laboring, and you're real thirsty, there's nothing that'll satisfy your thirst like good, pure water. Nothing. No kind of tea, nothing. Nothing. No kind of soft drinks, no kind of juices, nothing that'll satisfy your thirst like water. But think about going to a place, being there a thousand years, and never a drop of water. I wish some way or another, Brother Hawkins, we could get a hold of that. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. If there's some way or another that we could get a hold, and these lost people that dies lost, hey, in hell, they'll have the same senses that they've got that you have right here at Satan. Yes, amen. Second reason, Father Abraham sent Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for said I'm tormented in this fly. Now you seen me stick my finger down in that cup of water. And look, young lady, there's not even a drop failed yet, Brother Mike. Not even a drop. And I want you to think about going to a place and being there 10,000 years and never a drop of water. Uh-huh. Now let me ask you a question. Can you understand a little bit now why Jesus said in Mark 8, Verse 36, 37, for what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What about Luke 9, 25? For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world or lose himself or be cast away? In Matthew 16, 26, for what? Is a man profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? 
can't put a price tag on a soul. Your soul's worth more than worth. Thank you. Second reason why I don't want to settle by dying and go to hell, no water. No water. Now, Matthew 25, 41. I'm going to get two reasons here. It's not going to take me long. You just follow me now. Now, this is the judgment, Brother Hawkins, of the nations. And this is where some folk, they'll use, this is one of the passages that they use. And you know what, Brother Franklin, to get a general resurrection and a general judgment. This is one of the passages that they use. And they didn't know resurrection here. And there's no books here. And there's no Lamb's Book of Life here. It is the judgment of the nations. It's when Jesus comes back after the marriage and we come back with him at the revelation and before him will be gathered all nations. And he'll separate them as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And here's the third reason why I don't want to sit on by and go to hell. Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Prepared for who? The devil and his angels. It was not prepared for you, but God has got a plan, and it's right here in this King James Bible, and God don't have a plan for rich folk and another plan for common folk and another plan for poor folk and another plan for educated folk and uneducated folk and another plan for black folk and another plan for white folk and another plan for brown folk. God has got one plan. And you either come God's way or you'll die lost and you'll die and go to hell as sure as you're sitting here. Third reason why I don't want to sit by dying and go to hell. It was prepared for who? The devil and his angels. Revelation 19. Now they're going to, I want everybody to listen real close now. Don't miss this. You already know it. But it's good to be reminded. The beast and false prophet, they're going to be cast in alive. Now these people believe that you'll just burn up. That's all there to it. When the devil is cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. The beast and false prophet has already been in the lake of fire and brimstone over a thousand years, Amen. and they're still there. Right. Right. Now listen real close. And notice now, when the devil's cast in, let me quote it again. Did I quote Revelation 20 verse 10? Have I quoted it yet? I want to quote it right now. And the devil that deceiveth them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the beast and false prophet, Brother Mike, has already been in the lake of fire and brimstone over a thousand years and they're still there. What about that? Mark 9, 44, for their worm doth not, the fire is not quenched. Mark 9, 46, where their worm doth not, the fire is not quenched. Mark 9, 48, where their worm doth not, and the fire is not quenched. What about that? Third reason, it'll be everlasting. Forever. Is everybody listening? Forever, forever, forever. Hey, forever. Think about it. In verse 46, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. Now that's the fourth reason why I don't want to see nobody die and go to hell. It will be everlasting. 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 John 3, 36, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him. Right. Now the fifth reason. We're moving on, Brother Hawkins. We're moving on, Brother Her- Brother Love Day. We're moving on. Fifth reason, John 3, 16. Yeah. John 3, 16. For God 
the Creator. Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the fifth reason why, sir, I don't want to see nobody die and go to hell. For God so loved the world. And you know what world is there in the Greek? It's mankind, ma'am. For God so loved mankind. For God so loved the world. And then he proved to us that he loved us. He gave what to give. Amen. He gave his best. He gave his only begotten son. For God so loved the world. That's the cause. And what is the cost? He gave his only begotten son. And what is the condition? Whosoever believeth on him. And what is the consequences? Should not perish but have everlasting life. And if you're here this evening and you're saved and you know that you're saved, don't get too excited. I mean, you've just got eternal life. You've just got everlasting life. You're just going to live. You're just going to live as long as God lives. That's all. Take it easy. Don't get too excited about it. John 10, 28 and 29. Listen to this, Mom. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. And I and my Father are one. Colossians 3, 1. If you then, being risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. If you then, being risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Is that what it says? What's the other say? If you then, being risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sat at the right hand of God. Is that the way it goes? I've ever looked at that. If you then been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sat at the right hand of God. And let me look at that. Let me get over there. There's something that I want to see. Just, you there? Yeah, Colossians 3, 1. You better get over a page, son. You've been reading this book. I can tell that. If you then, being risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ set at the right hand of God, set your affections on things above and not on things of this earth. Here's what I want to get. For said you're dead and said your life is hid. Uh-huh. Your life is hid uh-huh. with Christ yeah. in yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. And when Christ, who is her life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Yep. And for the devil, if you're saved, for the devil to get you, he'd have to go up there and get to Jesus yeah. off the right hand of the Father. And then he'd have to go a little bit farther and get God off the throne. And he'd have to go a little bit farther. He'd have to go through the blood. And if he could do that, if he could do that, he would be a saved devil. Hey, man. Take it easy now if you're saved. Yes, amen. Don't get too excited. Somebody's liable to say something about your family tree. So be careful. Don't get too excited. John 5, 24. John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, Believe upon him that sent me. Now here's what I want you to notice. Present tense. Present tense. Right now. Hath everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation. But is passed from death unto life. Hallelujah. Take it easy now. You've just got eternal life if you're saved. You've just got ever. Lasting life, you're just going to live as long as God lives. Take it easy now. Don't get too excited. It's all right to get excited about 
racing. It's all right to get excited about hunting. It's all right to get about excited about fishing. And it's all right to get excited about shopping. But don't get too excited if you're saved, ma'am. Don't get too excited. You've just got eternal life. You've just got everlasting life. Hey, you're just going to live as long as God lives. That's all. Romans 8, 35. What a chapter. You do know that one of the greatest chapters, two of the greatest chapters in all the Word of God is 1 Corinthians 15. And Romans chapter 8. It starts off with Romans 8, 1. First, therefore, now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made, made us free or made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and condemning sin in the flesh starts out mom with no condemnation. Did you get that John 5, 24? You didn't get that, did you? Very, very, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, believe upon him that sent me, hath yes, ever last life, and yes. shall not come what? Into condemnation. And shall not come into condemnation. Because there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And how's it close? How's that chapter close? You remember? Starts out with no condemnation and it closes with no separation. That's right. Romans 8, 35. This might even get you excited. I know you had a pretty hard day today. Uh, you're, I mean, you're capable. Paul said, who? Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation Distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, pearl, salt, as it is written, for thy sake we're killed all the day long. We're accounted as sheep for the slaughter. But nay, in all these things. That's one thing, Ben, to be a conqueror. But it's another thing to be more than a conqueror. Amen. And he mentions nine things now. Be all right with it, Pastor. Who shall suffer? Now notice now. He said, I'm persuaded that neither death. Now death may separate me from Jimmy for a while. And from my children and from my loved ones and from my friends. But death mm, won't never separate me from him. Amen. Absent from the body, present Amen. with the Lord. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 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 Yeah. He said, I'm persuaded, Brother Hawkins, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, principalities, powers, things present, things to come, height, nor death, nor any other creature. He mentioned nine things and just thought it all away. Paul mentioned nine things, Mom, and just throwed it all in. He yeah. said, any other creature. Yeah. Amen. Said, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, angels, principalities, powers, things present, things to come, hot, nor death, nor any other creature. He just throwed it all in. He said, any other creature should be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Thank you. That's it. Yes. Hallelujah to God. Oh, yes. Amen. The next time you read John 3 16, when you get to war, I want you to write your name down there. Because that's mankind. Amen. Amen. 
I'm glad, Brother Hawkins, that he loved the world. For God so loved the world. The three certainties of God's love. God's love for the world. And then God's love for the church. Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church. He loved the church and gave himself for it. Now listen at me now. Take it easy now. I'm glad he loved the world. I'm glad he loved the church. But Galatians 2.20, Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. Come on now, say it along with me. He loved me. He loved me. You didn't get it, did you? Said he loved me. Said he loved me. And gave himself for me. Said he loved me. Said he loved me. Said he loved me. And gave himself for me. He loved me. Oh yes. He loved me. He loved me. Oh yes. He loved me. And gave himself for me. I'm glad he loved the world. I'm glad he loved the church. But Paul said, he loved me. Say it alone with me now. Say it alone with me. He loved me. He loved me. Stand up, wave your hands. He loved me. Oh, say it. Me. Say it. He loved 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 me. He loved me. Hey. He loved me. Gave himself for me. Glad and praising God. Boy, hey. Hey, man. Hey, man. Go ahead and praise him. Oh, go ahead and praise him. Oh, yes. The only difference. The only difference, the only difference in this, and when we get to heaven, the only difference, we'll be able to do it forever. And when we get tired, it won't be a bit more real. We'll be able to do it forever. You never get tired. Amen. That's it. That's it. You got in here last year, didn't you? Won't you stand up and praise him, girls? You got saved other night, didn't you? Just come on. Get up there and get in there. He just has got saved. Go ahead and praise him, girl. That has got saved Tuesday night. Go ahead, girls. Just got saved. Oh, yes. That's it. I'm glad that he loved the world. I'm glad that he loved the world. And I'm glad that he loved the church. But Paul said, if there hadn't been nobody but me, Paul said he loved me. Come on, say hello with me. Said he loved me. Oh, said he loved me. You hadn't got that yet, son. Said he loved me and gave himself for me. Me, 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 Freddy, me, oh yes, me. You ought to try to get it on this you can. Oh yes, oh yes. Glory to God, safe from hell. That's it, oh yes. If God the Father, God the Son want me to, I could swing out over hell on a number 50 sewing thread and sing blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heirs of salvation, purchased of God, born to the Spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Hey, 
Oh, yes. Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love towards us. In the while we were yet sinners, Christ, Christ died for us. Ahead, son, get in on it, boy. Yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah to God. First, to the of God. First John Lord. 3 1. Behold what manner of love hath the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. Better say that again, Brother Hawkins. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. I might ought to say that again. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. You know what's wrong with a lot of our churches? The church, we got a lot of church members. The world knows them. The world knows them. The world knows them. But therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be lacking. For we shall see him as he is. Take your glasses off, ma'am. Take your glasses off. Ma'am, it's not gonna be long till we're gonna be young again. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things, for the former things are passed away. Oh, yes. Former things are passed away. See it. You know what that word former means, don't you? Do you know? It means things of old. <laughs> things of old. They'll be passed away, Brother Hawkins. Yep. They won't be till we get to the New Jerusalem. But when we get to the New Jerusalem, former things will be passed away. And they talk, that song talks about the streets. Oh no. It's singular. Hit a street. The street will be pure gold. Won't even have any yell in it. It'll be transparent. Won't even have any yell in it. And we'll sing and shout and dance about. And the lamb will dry our tears. We'll have a grand homecoming week. The first 10,000 years. Oh, yes.